Hey guys, here's a quick little video, I hope, uh, of um, how I use MG's candles and my short little workflow. Um, there's not a lot of uh, magic to it. It's basically just follow what Judd is trying to teach us with the pyramid and start big and refine down. Uh, so uh, this is um, the Hippodrome model, and you can download it at riggingdojo.com. I I use this for um, uh, I'm taking defamation class there now, and I used it for uh, an assignment. So I've got some skinning going on here, and yeah, stuff like that. Um, so, I just thought I'd go through my layers and how they're painted. So, what I do and what I've read from um, the guy who makes MG Skinning Tools is that he recommends that you have a base layer where you have flooded all your vertices. So that no matter what you do after that layer, you don't have any vertices that doesn't have any influences. So, I start off basically with yeah, just a normal skin bind. It's just the same as with Judd. It doesn't matter how you bind it or whatever because we're gonna throw it out anyway. So, I have my spine layer at the bottom, and this is just like Photoshop. You have the layer above overwrites the layer below. So, if I go in and on my, if you see on my spine, my root layer, or my root joint, I first I flooded it to the entire guy, and then I painted in, and these are really bad because I placed the joints wrong, um, and then I just went up joint by joint, and that's everything that I have in my spine layer. And then I have my leg layer. Where I just have my hip, which I again I just flooded, just because I'm lazy, and you you can only just overlap the painting, but I I think it's you can just flood because you're gonna overpaint it with another layer either way. So, and I use my mask, the layer mask, to just paint out what I want. Um, so basically, I flood my hip, and I add in the knee and my ankle, and then I just refine the layer mask to get the transition into the hip area and the root joint. And the good thing about this now is that I can pretty much really use smooth uh, replace and everything inside this layer now because it's only affecting these sorry these three joints uh, and that's really nice so what you can do further on like I say here I I have my spine my leg and then my arm and the good thing about if if you it's like show all influences, you'll get everything. And it has a really nice influence filter, so if you just go uh, arm, elbow, wrist, you don't have to do any stars or whatever. Um, and if you want to do spine, it'll find everything. So it's a really great search filter. And as soon as you start um, making your weights, I really enjoy to use only influences with non-zero weights because then you'll just get every single influence in that layer. So it just makes it really nice when you're switching from layer layer to layer. You always have your your joints ready to use. And so you can see I have my arm, and again, my arm joint or my shoulder joint is just flooded. And I have my layer, which I've smoothed out. And then above that, I have my clavicle, where I 
I know I, I wrote in my um, forum post that I just flub this and then play with the layer mask, but since I only have one giant in here, it doesn't really matter what you do. Uh, I could basically do this on my clavicle joints, but again, that's just how you want to work. So you can see, I it's really nice because now when I only have the one, I can very very safely just remove, replace, and if we just take this up a bit, and if I want to smooth out some of this in paint, I think it has too much influence. I just use my scale on 95, and just come in and just paint it a little bit down. And it's really nice way to get large areas. Because sometimes smooth doesn't really get you what you want. So you just do a little scale, and that can do wonders at times. So just get a little bit down here, and then do a little smooth on top. So, yeah, and then have my neck base around here. Neck, head. Then I have my layer where I just smooth it out. So that's the the point of it. Just play around with it, and like I said, there's no magic. Just follow the principles that Judd tries to teach us, and you can just organize those principles more when you use layers. So another great thing is the mirroring. Now I don't have. Um, uh, Thing over here. Another skeleton, sorry, I totally spaced up. But uh, it has a couple of influence prefixes. So if normally it's really good at just figuring out what your other joints are if you do L underscore, R underscore, or left or right. And uh, sometimes you might have some exotic stuff like hippie rig left, hippie rig right. Just throw in all your prefixes here and have the right mirror axis and the influence distance error is um, if you have a lot of joints that are really um, tight, tight, like closely spaced, if they're really close to each other, you might want to take this down to increase your, uh, um, to get a better marine. So when you do initialize, it'll go through, it'll say the root joint and what it's. Um, mirror to, so everything is just mirrored to itself now. But if you see something is wrong and no matter what you do it doesn't want to take it over, and maybe you have a naming error or whatever, you can always right click and do manual association. Uh, you can normally turn it turned on by self reference, turn it off, you can select whatever joint you want, you just keep bi-directional on, uh, so when if you do any skinning on whatever side it'll go back and forth and okay and at the top you can see you've got the M for manual and then root joint spine joint uh, and also the relax is superb it's really great for just picking a bunch of vertices um, or if you checked out the MG Skin Tools video where he has the gas mask for tubes and stuff like that, it's really good at keeping the volume and distributing the weights nicely. But you can also just go crazy and do it all over the mesh. So I like to just use, just on low, relax. Normally I just do it on selected roots these. Yeah, it takes a bit while, but if you, if you take it up to medium, and do it. I did move a bit up here. My skinning is too good. But basically, check this out, it's really good. And again, use maximum, maximum influences per vertex. It's super great. Since it's a post-processing filter, it doesn't mess with your weighting. So now I, I put it to 1, but then I figure out, oh no, I want 2. Okay, just put it in, and it does it again. Oh no, I need 3, and it fixes it. Oh no, I still need one. So all my skinning information is still retained. I can turn it off, and I got everything left. 
And so that's pretty much the main thing about that. Um, and you got the lead custom nodes, which is uh, important if you want to pass on this rig file to somebody that doesn't have ng scheme tools. Because if you pass this along and they don't have ng scheme tools, they will get a missing plugin going on. So just delete custom nodes if you want to pass it on. Uh, and you also got the export as XML, JSON, import from XML, JSON. Um, I did a quick test, um, the Sigvard one, if you saw where you had his uh, face and neck totally distorted. I basically, I did a quick scan, um, exported out the information, and then I just deformed the mesh. Um, and skin him again with the same joints and imported the influence just to see if he kept it at the same uh, vertices so it worked pretty well. Uh, so you can use just the, um, uh, what's it called, the um, export skin weights map from uh, Maya but I, I think that's just cumbersome and you have to deal with the resolution and when you import it, it doesn't show you the dot weight file at first, and I, I just think it's, yeah, it's just blah. And the good thing about this is, like with um, the export file, it's if you just export it as an XML, you can go back in, edit the names if you suddenly have named them again, or if you want to use them on another character, whatever, you can just go in and edit it. It's a pure text file, um, and yeah. You got your convert the mask to transparency, um, which is you can go into each layer and do. Let me do it on the cloud control, so you can turn down the transparency of them all if you want to do that for some reason. I don't know why, but you can, and it's interactive, which is nice. So you can see what how much it influences, or if you just wanna tweak it a bit, and you don't wanna do a lot of work. Yeah. So that's basically it. There's, like I said, not a lot of magic. Just stick to the things that Dud is trying to teach us, and uh, yeah. If there's something I didn't touch on or uh, forgot. Uh, or if you want to know anything, just let me know. But like I said, it's just not a really, really complicated thing. It's pretty straightforward and just do good skinning practices and use this uh, and we'll get some really nice results. Yeah. See you on the forums and live sessions, guys.